please welcome this week's special guest, Greg. <laughs> Claire, what is Greg to you? This is Greg, and he is the RSPCA officer who came to my aid when a squirrel climbed into my handbag and wouldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Delaney, how do you know Greg? Well, this is Greg, and we once stayed up all night together holding on to a fence when a game of who can hold on to the fence the longest got out of hand. <laughs> Lee, <laughs> what's your relationship with Greg? This is Greg. I was so nervous about appearing on TV for the first time that I made him come with me and pretend we were a double act. <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? So, Claire, where were you when the squirrel jumped into your handbag? I was filming in Devon mm -hmm. for Country File. And I was doing one of those links, you know, when you walk along the cliff top, essentially. And oh, yeah. I'd left my bag under a tree, and sometimes there are little sweeties left in it, and I assume that is why the squirrel got in it. Yeah. You know when you get those selection chocolates and there's some, th the topics that nobody likes? I think I'd left, except unless you're a squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. In which case, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, it's the one thing they say about squirrels, they're not fussy when it comes to quality streak. <laughs> <laughs> So, as you approached the bag, what yes. did you see? How were you alerted to It this? was moving. And what did you do then? Did you I... continue to approach? Yeah, I thought, there's something in my bag. And then when I got close, I thought, it'll jump out, because I'm near to it, but mm. it wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're approaching the bag, Claire. The bag the, is it, moving. It's moving about. You know yes. there's a squirrel. You continue to approach. Yes. What happens then? The squirrel's doing its thing and continues probably, to rummage. Yeah, going yeah, through I mean, my diary. I my I'll phone. Help to a strawberry cream. Yeah. You know, I don't know yeah. why people are so fussy. <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman said, "Don't touch it, because because you might get bitten." And he said, "We'll call the RSPCA. They'll know what to do." Well, what, had you tried shake? Had you tried tipping it upside down? No, because all I've seen women do that like... to get things out. No, not if all, not if you've got earrings in the bag as well. In the middle of a field in Devon, you're not going to do that. <laughs> That's a great image of the squirrel <laughs> wearing the earrings and reading the diary. <laughs> She's got a busy December, no one's got a full date. <laughs> so they rang the RSPCA, Greg came up to a yes. cliff top in Devon. It did take a while. And the squirrel was still in your bag. Yeah. How did he get it out? How it, did he get the squirrel As it far? happened, I think the squirrel had probably had enough by then, so he didn't even have to do very oh, much. Oh, the squirrel came out of his own accord? Indeed. Oh. Yes, <laughs> he approached the bag. All right, David, what about the others? OK, Rob. A fence-holding-on contest yes. that got out of hand. Yes. You said all night, Rob, was that right? It went on all night, the fence-holding... Correct. Are you standing on the fence and holding... Are you no, we're standing, standing next to a fence. We're standing next to a wooden picket fence, touching it. Mm -hmm. touching and where it. were you? We were in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. One of you said, I'm not saying it's boring here in Massachusetts, <laughs> but who fancies holding onto that <laughs> fence all night? <laughs> <laughs> Fair. We, we had, there had just been a documentary that was sweeping the nation called Hands on a Hard Body, and it was about these people who could win a Toyota pickup truck if whoever held on to, whoever touched it for the longest. So we had just seen this documentary, yeah. and we were very drunk, so we thought, we were like, ha, wouldn't it be funny if we did this? And then we did it for nine hours. <laughs> and who is Greg? I mean, how was he there? Greg is the older brother. Uh, you can see he's quite a bit older than me. We, he was the <laughs> older brother of my friend that I went to college with. Did you learn a lot about Greg? More than I'd care to know. Could we have five <laughs> Greg facts? Uh, Opened his own bakery. Let's see. Who won? We agreed at 5 o'clock in the morning that we were both winners. And that <laughs> as 5 a.m. approached, so latitude. you started this at what time? About 8 p.m. You started that at 8 p.m. That seems very quite, early to start quite. a fence holding game. Yeah, it's quite early to be to go that strange. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when did you start drinking? Four or so in the afternoon. All right, maybe. Was yeah. It? I mean, you know, we're... <laughs> OK, now what about Lee? Uh, OK, Lee, um... Just yeah. remind us of what it was that you said. This is Greg, and uh, I was so nervous about my first TV appearance that I made him come along with me and pretend we were a double act. What was your first TV appearance? It was on a programme called Pump Television. 
What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it was a sort of magazine sort of type show. It was a bit funky and happening. It was like the one show, but for people that are allowed out in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you doing on the, on the show? Uh, just being interviewed. It was Reading Television, and I, I just won a competition for new comedians up in Edinburgh. What year was this? 1995. But you didn't win in Edinburgh till 1997. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I've completely messed up the story. I went on the show, Pump TV, to tell them that I could predict the future. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you said to us that you were, you were a double act. What sort of a double act? So I rang up and said, oh, sorry, I'm actually... Uh, I do a bit of double act work as well. Can I bring my double act partner on as well? And they said, yeah, fine, what does your double act partner do? And without thinking, I said, he's a juggler. To get there and, and juggle. Well, this is the thing. There's another twist to the story because yeah. obviously. Is the other twist to this story there is a complete lie? No, that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd be a twist. <laughs> so he comes. He comes on the show, and I tell him fairly last minute. I think we maybe an, an hour or two's notice. Oh, by the way, I may have told them that you were a juggler. So now he's panicking, isn't he? Mm. So what does he do? Because he thinks he's going to be asked to juggle on the show, and he can't juggle. Yeah. So <laughs> he bandaged his arm up. <laughs> um, so, thus, he wasn't... If they said, can you juggle, he can... He can say, I can't, I've hurt my arm. So, um, all the way there in the car, you're not talking about why you're driving all those ways We didn't to... drive together, I couldn't. He'd injured his arm juggling. No, that's, <laughs> not... <laughs> um, that's not right, is he? No, I'm starting to think. No, I met him at the studio because he okay. actually is from Reading. <gasps> that's handy, isn't it? That was good. <laughs> was there any other guests on the TV show? I can't remember. I think there was a, a person who had a dog and the dog did something. Yeah. Uh, there was a bit of... It's amazing. Well, maybe he actually <laughs> didn't have a dog, but he just persuaded the dog to come on because he was nervous. <laughs> All right, we need an answer. So, um, David's team. Is Greg Claire's squirrel saviour, Rob's fence feeler, or Lee's pretend partner? It's a pretty unappetising menu, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Clear, uh, Baldy. I don't, I don't believe that she would be scared. Somebody who hosts Country Fire. If there was a sound man there with a boom, you could have used that furry boom to entice... Like, maybe you could have pretended it was a bad chair. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, if you were a lady and you saw your handbag moving, you wouldn't immediately think squirrel in there, would you? You'd think, oh, God, it's gone off again. <laughs> <laughs> What about Rob's story? There was a lot of detail with Rob's fence-holding story. I like Rob's. It could very well be true, but... I think so. Greg's hands were made for holding on to fences. <laughs> so you, th you think Rob... Rob, yeah. who do you think? I think because Lee so rarely sounds plausible, I think it'd be nice to give him a little go. <laughs> I think that when, when Lee went on Pump TV <laughs> in 1995 with an average viewing figure of 14... <laughs> He was too nervous <laughs> to go on his own. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, I think Rob. I think You're going to say Rob Delaney. That's okay. what we're going for. Yeah. OK, so, Greg, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Greg, and I pretended to be in a double act with Lee. Greg is Lee's pretend partner. Now, we have a picture oh. of Lee and Greg on TV together. Oh. There they are. Yeah! That's <laughs> brilliant! I, look, I can see Greg I in the picture. I'm taking nine series <laughs> together. Who's the really like, skinny who's, fella? Who's the 70 year old man who's got it? <laughs> I'll tell you what, David, coming from you, that is rich. <laughs> It was it great. I was very thin. I was nine stone, though. I was a skinny lad. I mean. Good mm. Lord. But we've made great advances in medicine, and <laughs> he's here with us today. Thanks very much, Greg.